Hi folks, this is Jeff, SimSamurai.net. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I wanted to spread a little holiday cheer to you folks. Um, basically what you see before you is a project for building a dual trim wheel for pilot and co-pilot, a speed brake lever, and a flap switch. And this metal pan that you see is going to mount right up underneath the throttle, uh, my throttle quadrant by CH Products. Um, basically you want to start out with a 13 by 9 uh, cake pan. Um, it kind of measures out more on the edges to about 15 inches by about 10 and a half. Um, after looking for some project boxes, I couldn't really find anything that was that well suited and old scratched up used cake pan like this actually works perfect for the job. It's uh, made out of thin metal, it's easy to punch, easy to drill through. And it seems like it would do the job. It's about two and a half inches deep, um, works for me. So basically what you want to go do is buy some steel rod like this, quarter inch uh, is the diameter. And you want to cut a piece that's about 19, 19 and a half inches. Um, I believe this one for my application is, uh, let's see here, about uh, 17 and a half, 18. But you know, it's better to start off a little longer, make sure you, you don't you cut it too short to begin with. Uh, obviously be really careful with it, you don't want to bend it or anything like that that's going to be very important in this project. Um, so, uh, you know, when you go tool shopping, it's always a good idea to, to try and get your tools out of the way first, make sure you've got everything you need so you don't have to keep going back to the store. Um, you can go to Home Depot. There's also a place online, or if you might have a store in your town, called Harbor Freight, uh, maybe harborfreight.com. They have really cheap, kind of made-in-China tools, good for the home user, not so great for the contractor, but uh, if you're only going to be using them on occasion, uh, they're cheap and they do the job. Basically what you're looking at here is a Forstner bit. Um, you can get a set like this, seven piece, that come down from like quarter inch size up to an inch. Uh, very handy tool for punching some of the holes in this wood stock later. Um, you also want to get some drill bits. Um, I usually like to use a drill guide like this. Uh, you know, so you, you get precise measurements with your drill bits. It's really important to use the right ones. We've got a quarter inch drill bit here. Um, I've got a 964, so 1 8, the 764th, and a 332nd. The 332nd, 764th, very good for pre drilling holes for stuff like uh, inch and a quarter drywall screws. Um, and then an eighth inch uh, you can use for pre drilling the holes in the metal for those drywall screws to go into later. Um, I also bought at Harbor Freight a four inch cutting wheel um, that uses a little, you know, carbide. Uh, thin curved cutting wheel. This is a very dangerous tool to have. Um, you know, they cost cheap at Harbor Freight, but you also want to get a pair of gloves, a mask, um, some eye protection, and when you're using this, be very careful because it's very much like a bone saw, and even with gloves on, you can quickly see your bone. So, this I used for cutting out my speed brake lever out of aluminum. You know, maybe if you had something else that you could use as a lever that you would just have to drill and not actually cut out of aluminum. Uh, aluminum you would be in better shape uh, than using this tool right here but if you know how to use power tools this is a good option. Um, nail punch, a uh, little small tip I use these for just setting where I'm going to drill holes in the metal just a quick little tap kind of indents the metal just a little bit helps when you're punching the metal so that your screw doesn't wander around while you're trying to drill a precise hole. Um, number eight, stainless steel washers. This we're going to use for as you can see, there's some still on the bottom uh, for just giving a little decorative finish and helping to seat our screws. So I use these a lot. Stainless steel varieties better than zinc because they don't rust. So something you want to pick up. Um, this right here is a number 4-40 by 3 quarter inch little bolt. Um, and these are going to go when we fix the actual speed brake lever and attach it to our potentiometer. So some of these are great to have. Um, another thing, those you would probably get at Home Depot, by the way. Another thing you can get from Harbor Freight are what are called little picks or like dentist tools. Um, little scrapers, a little scribe like this is great for inscribing metal rather than using a pen or a pencil. It makes a really nice, clean, straight line. And they've also got little uh, little file kit. It uh, looks like little emery boards, you know, but uh, I wouldn't use them on your hands, but um, they work great on metal and other plastic projects. Uh, so a good thing to pick up. Also, you're going to want to get some 60-40 rosin core solder, and this is a .032 inch diameter, really small soldering resin. Um, a nice soldering iron with a really thin uh, pencil point on it is great. One that's adjustable, this has got 50 watts and 30 watts. Um, 15 watts is usually ample for doing small, fine soldering work that we're going to be doing. 
Um, this is called a you know, hands-free helper. It's got a nice little magnifying glass on it and some clips to hold wires that we're going to be soldering down the road. Next, you also want to have a hot glue gun because we're going to um, hot glue our potentiometers into these blocks of wood later and some glue sticks. Um, you also want to have a pair of wire strippers. Um, these are, you know, contractor electrical grade strippers go all the way down to pretty much a 24, 26 gauge. Um, so these are good to have. Just a pair of regular wire cutters. Those are good to have. And then maybe a few pair of needle nose pliers. These might, you might have at home laying around somewhere. Small pair will help. And then lastly, a utility knife um, always comes in handy for certain things. Um, and then also, one of the things you want to buy, you can get these off eBay for about seven bucks. They also have maybe have them at uh, you know, Napa or Craig and Auto Parts, AutoZone, is a grommet kit. And these usually go from like down uh, below a quarter inch in diameter up to an inch. These are great to have for this project, cheap, and uh, usually comes with a little diagram. Shows you your inside, outside diameter, that kind of stuff, so you know how to drill, uh, how big to drill the hole before you actually put the grommet in. Um, so that's it for tools. Um, next, I'll just kind of go over how I laid this out and how I decided to build this and why I decided to. And uh, basically, uh, started out again. This is a Farberware 13 by 9 cake pan, uh, roughly 15 by 10 and a half quarter inch steel rod. Um, again, basically what's going to happen is you want to put these blocks. These are nice hardwood. If you don't have anything like this laying around, go to Home Depot, pick up some three quarter inch maple stock or oak. You don't need much, roughly 10 and 10 inches um, to go down into here. These are tapered. You don't have to do that. You could square them off if you wanted to. Um, I just wanted to make sure they fit really nice in the pan. Then you basically draw a straight line down the middle of each, pop a hole right in the middle using uh, you know, one of your smaller drill bits. I'd say the 7 64ths would be a good one to use to pre-drill where your uh, screws are going to go into this. You only want to drill it approximately one inch deep. Uh, again, hole in the middle, come up uh, three inches, drill another hole, down three inches, drill another. Do that for both pieces. Then basically on your box in here, come in two inches. I put mine a little closer after doing this, however, I recommend you come out a little further, about a good two, two and a half inches, and draw a line. And then basically you see these points on the back side of this. Do the same thing. And using the same exact hole measurements that you do here, you want to transfer those onto the bottom of your pan, hit it with a nail punch. Use this, uh, in this case, for drilling through the metal, use a one eighth inch drill bit and then drill your holes. And then so basically, screws, those get attached into there like that. And then after you've got a good fit and check for that, the next thing you want to do is drill your holes for where the actual rod is going to penetrate through this for actuating your trim. Um, and how you're going to do that is you, again, once you've laid out where your holes are for the uh, uh, you know trim bar, the trim rod rather, once that's laid out, you can put it in the exact center if you want. I, however, moved it an inch and a half in one direction just because of where I wanted my trim wheel to sit uh, further up on my side in my throttle quadrant rather than further back by my side um, is why I moved this up an inch. Um, you know, that's going to be personal taste. Um, but basically, you know, you come down an inch, drill a hole there once you know that, you know, you've got your dimensions here and here come down an inch on each side, drill your holes for the rod to sit through. And then in this case, I put in grommets that are just a little bit under one quarter inch, and that's so that the rod kind of has some nice tension to it, um, you know, and will, uh, you know, not move around so freely. So the next step is then you want to transfer that same line an inch down into your blocks so that the uh, rod will penetrate through the wooden blocks. And to keep it from rotating around and being so loose, I decided I would use roller blade bearings. And I got this, uh, just had to lay around from an old set of blades that I had that I replaced and still kept the bearings and figured they might come in handy one day and they did. And basically they've got little quarter inch plastic sleeves that I cut in half. Um, you only need two bearings, one for each side and then cut the sleeve in half and it fits really nice on this quarter inch shaft, just like so. And then using the Forstner bits that I picked up from Harbor Freight. I used the 7 8 inch one and I uh, use my drill press. You don't have to use a drill press but you can use this uh, uh, cordless drill. So anyway part two coming at you. We'll see you in a minute.